warm welcome to another edition of To The Point. Budget 2018 and 19 has given a big push to the agriculture sector. In fact, it has been hailed as a step in the right direction. But the million dollar question is that can it really help to double the farmer's income by 2022? Joining me now is member Neeti Ayok, a veteran policy maker and a renowned voice in the field of agriculture. I welcome Professor Ramesh Chand on To The Point. So my first question to you is that are we in a position to say that agricultural policies in India are undergoing a paradigm shift? They are. In fact, uh, uh, two years back when Prime Minister came with this uh, slogan that we should uh, try hard to double income of the farmers uh, uh, between 2016 and 2022, that imply that in future target have to be set around income of the farmer. Till now, we have been fixing target for production. Beet production is to be increased to this level, rice production is to be increased to this level. So now, there is a paradigm shift that the target of production will be there, but they will be there in the background. In the forefront will be income of the farmer. And in that process, increase in production will be one of the goal. Right. In fact, I was uh, going through the data of uh, the National Sample Survey Organization, which said that the average monthly income of the farmers in India is about 6,426 rupees. Now, when in this resolution of doubling the farmers' income, which is the income we are looking at is going to be doubled? Is it the actual income or is it the minimum income? Uh, what is the act which is this uh, bracket of income we are looking at is going to be doubled? No, I have prepared the estimate of income of the farmers and that will be taken as the basis. Okay. You see this NSSO 201213 before that 2023, they use different definition of farmers. They use different definition of agriculture household. Mm -hmm. But we have done is that we have first estimated what is income, total income of all the farmer in the country divided it by number of cultivators. So that income has to be doubled and it is somewhat higher than what is reported uh, here because of uh, definitional reason. So we have a concept, we have a number uh, which has to be doubled by year 2022. Okay. Now if you look at the evolution of agriculture, in 60s you had a green revolution which, which uh, focused mainly on the food production. But uh, the social and the social and the economic impact on the lives of the farmers was, was never the focus at that time. Now for example, say lots of factors uh, come into play like soil, environment, climate. So uh, is this budget going to deal with these extraneous factors also which are going to impact the social economic uh, uh, life of the farmers? Of course, you see, priority should change over time. In mid-60s, when we started with Green Revolution, uh, people were dying of hunger. We were having starvation. We were considered a, a country which is going with begging bowl to uh, other country which have surplus food. So at that time, the most important priority was, in whatever way, we have to raise food production. Now we are in a situation where we are somewhat comfortable in terms of per capita food availability. We still have hunger, but its incidence is very, very low. We are now exporting more than 5% of our total agriculture production, and we are net exporter. That gives us the comfort that now we need to pay attention to other aspects, and that other aspect is most important, number one, that we pay attention to those who produce food. Are they enthused to continue to producing more food? If they are not enthused to continue to more uh, produce, that will cause a setback to the growth. And since 45% uh, of our, agri our total workforce is engaged in agriculture for their livelihood, so increase in income is important from that angle also, that uh, almost majority of the population will not uh, face this uh, um, uh, rising India, shining India, new India. So if we want to uh, involve them, if we want to sabka saath, sabka vikas, then we have to pay specific attention to do, those those uh, category of our society. But another, uh, Professor Chand, another reality of uh, the Indian agriculture, or rather the farmers, is that their main source of income cannot be farming alone. They have to look for 
alternative sources of uh, income. Now, is the government or maybe the budget this year, is it really focusing on those non-farm, non-rural sectors from which a farmer can earn money? You see, in our roadmap for doubling income, we um, uh, defined five, six uh, uh, sources of increase in income. Okay. And one of the source is that uh, after 2001, a process has set in Indian agriculture where first time the number of cultivators has started declining and number of total agriculture worker has also started declining because we have more uh, labor in agriculture than but can be supported by agriculture sector so that uh, momentum which built up after 2001 which is also demonstrated by nsso data of uh, uh, 4 5 and 11 12 we need to give further push to that momentum that we need to create some opportunities beyond harvest. That opportunity may be in the post harvest activity, some sort of value addition. That opportunity may be in the food processing sector. That opportunity may be in the non farm rural sector. So that opportunity is very, very important because the income ultimately gets distributed over a particular denominator. So reducing that denominator is very much part of the, the whole uh, idea of doubling farmer income. When uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi announced uh, that the farmer's income should be doubled by 2022, soon a committee was formed on the DFI that is doubling the farmer's yeah. income. Uh, how much pro uh, work has really progressed since then? Are you, are you contented with the pace of work which has taken place mm -hmm. so far? Mm -hmm. You see, there are two aspects. First is that we should have a road map. Okay. That committee, Ashok Dalvai and those people who worked with me on farmer income issues in uh, academics, so they were all involved. They worked at length how much capital formation, what kind of changes in technology, what kind of changes in market, value addition. They looked at all those things. Now that has been prepared. Now there is an urgent need to bring it on the ground. So uh, maybe we will take it up uh, uh, later on 19th, 20th February. Okay. Prime Minister uh, gave, asked Ministry of Agriculture and uh, to me to uh, discuss this thing with all the stakeholders. So you mean to say that, that on 19th and 20th February, all the stakeholders yes. will meet and yes. work out yes. on a mechanism as yes. to how you how can double the... How we take it on the ground. Okay. Yeah, yeah. How we take those things on the ground, okay. which academic and other experts, they have produced uh, several volumes. In detail, they have provided information that uh, how we should uh, increase capital investment, how we should involve private sector, um, how we should uh, deal with uh, nutrient deficiency, insurance, risk. So they, that there is now uh, rich literature available with us, which tells us what to do and how to do. Now it is the implementation part, which should start immediately without further delay. And if you look at the announcement in this budget, those are targeting, those are focusing on that implementation part. But uh, Professor Chand, when you talk about implementation, almost 19, 20 states are there where we, these are BJP ruling states. Now from the centrally, from, from the planning which is so centrally involved, you have a central planning process and you have to ensure that the implementation carries out smoothly in other states. Now how do you really you know, talk about an effective implementation because there would be many things which are not going to be in your hands when, when it goes into the state's domain. How, how will you really carry that out? Um, I personally believe that uh, centre has enough base to provide incentive to states to do particular things. Okay. Like to give you example, we have RKBY, Rashtriya Krishi Vikas Yojana, okay. under which there are huge resources which are given to the share for development of agriculture. So I have been pleading that let us make it contingent upon implementation of certain reform by states to take RKBY. Okay. Now finance minister has announced big scheme that we will go for implementation of MSP which has not been implemented in last 50 years for 20 crops. When we do that, obviously lot of resources will be needed, right. lot of involvement will be needed. So that is another opportunity that when we implement it, we so can make it contingent. So you have to incentivize the states. That uh, yes, yes, we are willing to help those states 
which undertake certain so, reform certain measures so incentivizing the state and at the same time uh, uh, creating a competitive spirit between them i think that 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 is another that thing which we have already at. been doing okay. last year uh, niti o came with agriculture market and farm friendly mm -hmm. uh, uh, reform index so there be just ranked that which state is at the top which state is at the bottom and maharashtra was coming at the top we again will prepare that index and just uh, uh, some sort of uh, that state see to it some sort of introspection or what you call faming and shaming naming <laughs> so that we did it that we prepared that index last year when uh, ease of uh, doing business index was uh, was uh, was prepared at the same time i prepared it for agriculture sector so again we will prepare it just to Uh, just to use this uh, mechanism that the country knows which state is doing what and as a result where states are not undertaking required changes to create some sort of pressure from farmer there look center is doing but there is a delay on your part uh, do it another uh, talked about point which was highly talked about in the budget this year was the msp how the msp has been increased now prime uh, uh, finance minister arun jaitley said that the minimum support prices uh, for the rabi season have been announced with a 50% mark up and the same principle is obviously going to be applied for the kharif uh, crops now but when you take an analysis of the agricultural costs and the msps it shows that until unless the government changes the definition of the cost radical changes won't be seen on the ground so how you how do you really define the cost in the present context mm -hmm. you see the confusion is created because in agriculture some of the resources are farmers own resources okay. some resources he buy from the market like his own family labor he himself spend his time uh, his wife his children they spend time in agriculture so that is one cost the second cost on which there is lot of discussion is 88% land in our country is self cultivated meaning that farmer doesn't pay any rent on that so but there is a way to calculate notional rent on this the confusion is that when 50% margin is to be considered on what cost it will be considered as per the budget and as per what i have been saying from niti yog side margin should be provided on those costs which are incurred margin is not provided on those costs which are not incurred at all those costs should be considered but his own a... labor his land rent should be considered right, but, but for calculation of margin those cost which he doesn't incur they should not be considered so b came out just one uh, right. uh, clarity on this that it is not only the cost paid by the farmer even the services and input which are at his own farm his own bullock labor his own machine labor interest on his own working capital his own seed his own manure his own family all those will be put in one group which is called a2 plus fl a2 plus fl but many people i mean the farm lobbies the farmers the specialists and the analysts many of them have been saying that this a2 plus fl formula the the cost at which one arrives is is the cost which the farmers were already getting from beforehand i mean from the, even the earlier governments were giving it so uh, would you, would you, would you correct if, if if i'm wrong on this mm -hmm. not in all the crops okay like if you look at ravi crops mm -hmm. the technological advance in case of wheat is such mm -hmm. that its a2 plus fl is only 800 rupees and cost c2 is around 1100 some rupees for the recent years mm -hmm. but if you look at the msp that is much higher for wheat compared to many other crop which has higher cost than wheat mm -hmm. so and i can tell you that for almost all kharif crop this formula is not working mm. like if you for the last year if you uh, put 50% more than a2 plus fl then the increase in msp which will be required is a to 48% on as many as 15 crops so it's not that it was taken care in all the crops so it also but from now on it will be taken care of for all the crops which come under will be msp the baseline okay. it's not that msp will be exactly 1.5 times a2 plus fl mm -hmm. that is the baseline 
the MSP can be much higher, but MSP can be closer okay. to, to the cost, but in any case, I did the calculation, I find except one or two cases, if you take 50 percent higher than A2 plus FL, it covers cost C2. But on the ground, why do the farmers feel that they have not got enough, even after the announcements which have been made in the budget 2018 for them? There are two types of farmers. Okay. One is who are already getting MSP mm -hmm. and they are not more than 10 percent. There are 90 percent farmers who are not getting any MSP at all. Right. So those who are getting, they are asking for more. But those who are not getting MSP, as I said, 90% are not getting MSP. So for them it will be a gain. Major now. historical announcement in this budget to my mind is to ensure that if MSP is announced, it will be honored. That is a great step. Last 50 years, we have been announcing MSP for 23 crops, honoring it for some reason only for 3 crops. So this to my mind is the major announcement in the budget. Like if finance minister is to play with the sentiment the way we have been playing in the past, he could say, okay, I take 1.5 of C2, but don't honor it as it has not been honored in the past. So major change in this budget is that if government is announcing MSP, they have asked NITIO that you discuss with central department and, and state. And you have to make it operational out, as well. Uh, make it operationalized for next grief season itself. That will make the major difference. So 10 percent farmer who are already getting MSP, they will require more and more MSP. But uh, there are many states like, uh, in fact, a few states like uh, Madhya Pradesh, Karnataka, Telangana who have rolled out their own price differential schemes. But from the central level, I mean, is the central government thinking of such price deficiency payments at an all India level? Because uh, there is no clarity on this kind of a proposal in the budget. No, you see, when we have to honor MSP, we need to do something on the ground. Now there could be two possibilities so far tried. Mm -hmm. One is that government procure other commodity, bajra, ragi, mustard, ch chana, masur, moong, the way it is procuring wheat and paddy and cotton. This is one way, that through procurement mechanism. Second is that procurement generally turns out to be very, very costly. Very difficult for public agency to undertake operation without huge losses. So second method is, which I first suggested in 2003 when we faced the present type of problem, that the, the shortcut and easier way is you monitor prices in the market. If farmer are getting price lower than MSP, you pay the gap. That pilot is done this year for eight crops by state of Madhya Pradesh. So they called it Bhavantar Bhuktan Yojana. Madhya Pradesh is the only state which did it and they did it very ably. I have been monitoring implementation of this, they did it very ably. Mm -hmm. Other states against interest like Karnataka, Telangana, mm -hmm. they visited and they, I also uh, told the uh, official of the states, you just visit and see how this scheme is working. So they also looked at it and Haryana has announced it for vegetable crops. So we have already planned with Ministry of Agriculture to call meeting of all the states on 1st of March. So we are working fast on this. So we will state, take views of these states, we will put before them, these are the options available. So what kind of option you would like to avail? My personal view on this is that we should not have only one option. We should give choice to the states. Like now MP has experience, they are implementing Bhavantar. But other states may like to go for procurement for some reason, they may say no center meet the losses, but we will go for the procurement. So we will discuss with the states on 1st of March, that is the first meeting, where we will take their view and we will just uh, uh, take uh, their suggestion, their views and, uh, and based then you on, will have a central based on plan that we will, uh, we will suggest to, uh, we will finalize that, uh, but mechanism is to be adopted to implement MSP on ground. Right. Mm. Now, uh, another thing, Budget 2018 also allocated about 2,000 crore for the agricultural market and the infra fund. Now, how do you really think that the markets are going to be strengthened with this kind of a fund? And of course, implementation on the ground again will be a challenge. My reading of this is that, uh, you know, if you look at arrival of produce in the regulated or formal or organized market, even in a state like Madhya Pradesh, only 30% of produce come into 
those regulated market some is retained for self use but 60% sometimes 70% is sold in small places what we call heart we have 22000 rural heart where produce is sold which will be upgraded now into grammy in agriculture haan, they will markets. be haan, they will be upgraded to gram and budget say that first we will make use of whatever money under mg narega and others hmm. plus that is not enough we will require something more hmm. so according to my calculation if we upgrade 22000 heart with 2000 crore rupee it come close to 1 lakh rupee hmm. so that will also be that to buy some equipment which can't be bought under mg narega to buy some other kind of material so this money to my mind will be primarily used for for upgrading uh, uh, infrastructure making pakka yard uh, kind of things and But, those uh, and many many specialists still say that this amount of money which is being pumped into the into the agricultural infra fund is is just not enough at the moment we should not forget that agriculture is after all a state subject even in the 70s when we went for development of regulated market center provided some initial support later on states picked up this is the record in the past also that for everything center provide some resources some are contributed by the state but what is going to be the share of the states in the present context when you look at these funds how much is the state going to pump in how much is the central government going to uh, put no there is no sharing like this because there is not fixed kind of thing like this as of now center has suggested that mg narega can be used if some labor work is to be undertaken or limited that uh, material cost plus this 1 lakh rupee per market that kind of uh, uh, assistance will be available from the uh, from the state for this purpose but connecting those 22000 uh, rural heart is very important because uh, remote area small and marginal farmer they invariably do not bring their produce into the uh, regulated organized market they just small quantity they sell there itself so it is very very important to bring into the marketing fold if not entire marketable surplus a, a substantial portion of marketable surplus as a part of that another which uh, a disturbing trend rather which had been seen is the declining private investment in agriculture now if you look at the share of gross value added in agriculture which declined from 18.2% in 2011 to 12 to 16.4 in 2015 and 16 now this majorly has been seen i mean the reason which has been seen is a decline in the private uh, investment in agriculture how are you really going to boost the private players to come into agriculture and you know become important players the so called private investment in agriculture the number which you are quoting is investment by farmer okay. it is not by private corporate sector okay. share of private corporate sector in agriculture investment is only 2% mm-hmm. and out of the total investment in the country they spend only 0.5% okay. so we are working on two fronts first why it declined from 18 to 16% mm-hmm. price is a very very important factor determining what kind of investment farmer will make on farm these are investment by farmer because okay. farmer are also private sector it's not a public sector so generally it has been seen that if terms of trade for agriculture are improving farmer spend more so in every, agriculture so every farming entity now will be looked upon as an enterprise that's what you're meaning to say of course and when they have favorable terms of trade when their income are rising you will find that they will spend higher proportion of their income in the in the say improvement of land purchase of uh, machinery and equipments having a pakka uh, farm at their place fencing uh, irrigation many other kind of uh, infrastructure so this then there are attractive price and second is that they should get uh, liberal credit so two major factor for private investment one is liberal credit Uh, inst- institutional credit and second is price of the produce so these two factors there is a increase of uh, you know uh, 10% in the amount of institutional credit that will flow to farm sector similarly this uh, improvement in prices through implementation of msp so i feel that these two factors will restore the 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 level of investment made by uh, private sector mean farmers but 
there is a need if we want agriculture sector today to become modernized uh, progress the 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 corporate private investment should also come into agriculture that is another area now another uh, thing which uh, the economic survey pointed out was that climate change might reduce the farm incomes up to 20 to 25% in the medium term that's again a disturbing sign now which means that we need climate resilient agriculture and the budget this year was was almost kind of silent on the climate change measures which apparently the government could could state and also another disturbing fact is that not too much work is uh, not too much money is going into the agricultural research so how are you really going to bring bring a, a synchronization mm. between the two mm. first i differ with the economic survey on this particular thing though i also belong to government but i differ we cannot estimate with so much precision that this kind of effect is going to happen on farmer income okay. it is important sometime to signal those kind of thing to get attention okay. but that kind of you see climate change has been happening last 15 20 years also but there is no decline in farmer income because of several reason one is the point you raise through technology you counter the adverse effect of climate i'm not saying that we bother, don't bother about climate change but technology is one way climate resilient agriculture is one way there's a big project nikra national initiative for climate resilient agriculture okay. human knowledge investment increase in irrigation so these are the ways to 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 uh, counter and also adapt to the effect of climate change so as far as uh, agriculture r&d is concerned in fact this year after many years there is a substantial increase i think uh, nearly 800 crore rupee increase is there uh, in allocation for agriculture research and uh, in development. fact as far as uh, the funds are concerned obviously this year's budget pointed out that the funds are not a problem in fact uh, you have uh, Uh, a fisheries and aquaculture infrastructure development fund then you have a, a animal husbandry infrastructure development fund and you have about uh, uh, an increase doubling the allocation for the food processing sector which is from 715 crore to 14000 crore now obviously when funds are not a problem but how hopeful are you my last question to you is that how hopeful are you that farmers incomes will be doubled by 2022 how hopeful are you Of, of of this in brief i will say that all these measures announced in the budget if they are brought on ground earnestly and immediately okay. uh, completely we will definitely succeed in achieving that goal thank you professor chand for coming on the program so that's it on this episode of to the point see you next time with another personality goodbye and thanks for watching